of Arts and Minds. I lost my eyes. I lost my feet, everything. Omar Khadr was just a teenager when he was captured by American troops in Afghanistan in 2002. Toronto Star national security reporter Michelle Shepard has been writing about him ever since. When Omar was shot and captured, he was 15 years old. He was held at Bagram Air Base, where he turned 16, and then he was brought to Guantanamo. There's never been a prosecution, a war crimes trial, of someone under the age of 18 in, in modern-day history. So this will set a precedence as the first war crimes trial of someone who was only 15 at the time of his alleged actions. You want to go back to Canada? Well, there's not anything I can do about that. This interrogation video, recorded in February 2003, was released to the public by Cotter's Canadian lawyers. Born in Toronto, Cotter is the only Western detainee left at the U.S. military prison in Guantanamo Bay. The Pentagon has declared that the 265 detainees still here at Guantanamo Bay are enemy combatants. Shepard has been reporting on the case from Cuba since Cotter first arrived at the U.S. military prison camp. His Canadian and lawyers argue that Cotter should not be prosecuted there and that he should be repatriated back to Canada. In her book, Guantanamo's Child, the untold story of Omar Cotter, Shepard investigates the ongoing debate. Traditionally, when we think of child soldiers, we think of children being co-opted by a guerrilla group or a government. In this case, they're arguing he was co-opted by his family. So to understand that, we have to understand where his ca family came from and what they were all about. Abdurrahman Khadr is Omar's older brother. He made headlines in March 2004 when he openly admitted his family's involvement with Al-Qaeda in this CBC documentary called Al-Qaeda Family. By me saying it, I just admitted that we are an Al-Qaeda family, you know. We had connections to Al-Qaeda. I'll give you the Al-Qaeda perspective because I lived with them and I know how they think. They would never give that kind of information to a child that's 15. My brother has no knowledge that's going to just break the whole cover over Al Qaeda, you know? My brother was there because he was sent there by my father. He was translating. Stuff went wrong and he got shot. Shepard has become an expert on Cotter's case, appearing on TV and radio shows such as this phone interview for American Public Radio. What we do know is that he had gone with a man by the name of Abu Layth al Libby, who has since been killed. His father lent him to him to, to translate. That's what, what his uh, family had told me. You talk in your book about the fact that Canadians may have been growing weary now of, of the Cotter story. Canadians haven't been able to separate the story of Omar Cotter and what's happening to him from the story of his family. Omar's father, the late Ahmed Saeed Cotter, is alleged to have been an associate of Osama bin Laden's. Because of that, the Cotters have been dubbed Canada's first family of terrorism. Omar's father came from Egypt to Canada and when the Soviets invaded Afghanistan he decided to go to Afghanistan, join the Jihad and become a charity worker there. When the Soviets withdrew he stayed behind and it was at that time that he met Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda's elite and he supported their ideology and the children had this this incredible upbringing that they were shuttled back and forth between Afghanistan and Pakistan and Canada. Five years ago, when the rest of Canada was saying, good riddance, hope you rot in jail, Omar Cotter, Dennis and his law partner, Nathan Whitling, were asking how a 15-year-old could be interrogated, abused, and jailed without charges. Cotter's Canadian lawyer, Dennis Edney, attended Shepard's book launch. She also shows how Cotter is really a pawn in this whole experience. Why is this boy, when he's 14 and a half, such a powerful symbol, symbol for America keeping him, a symbol for Canada doing nothing, a symbol for people like myself fighting for him. No matter where you rest on this case, people should be asking why Canada uh, is confident that Cotter can receive a fair trial down there before the military commission. When Cotter is charged with five war crimes, including the murder of a U.S. soldier. During a firefight, he's alleged to have thrown a grenade that fatally wounded Sergeant Christopher Spears. There was a presumption for years that he was the one to throw the grenade uh, that killed the, or fatally wounded the U.S. soldier because he was the only survivor of the compound. We now learn that there might have been someone else alive at the time. We know that for six years the American government lied that Omar Carter threw a hand grenade at a, at a, at a soldier and there was an eyewitness. 
We now have documents that show that's not the truth. In March 2008, evidence was presented in court which suggested that documents implicating Cotter in the firefight had been doctored. More recently, two other American witnesses stated that Cotter wasn't the only one alive when the grenade was thrown. What it tells you is that five and a half years later, America lied. And by countries like Canada not standing up and saying, the one principle we hold is upholding legal values that have been created and enshrined for hundreds of years. By being silent, we become complicit with the Americans. Now 22, Cotter has been in U.S. custody for six years. Canada's inaction over his case has some Canadians protesting for his return, while others believe he should remain in Guantanamo. I am not asking you to bring my brother back and to say that he was innocent of everything and that he's, just because he's my brother, to give him, you know, every freedom in the world. All I'm asking for, and this is what I'm asking the Canadian government to ask for, is justice. A real chance at justice. Put your hand down. You know, you don't care about me. You don't I'm not an advocate, I'm not a lawyer, I wasn't pushing any one side. I, I just wanted to tell the story because I felt it hadn't been told properly yet.